Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another Stock Pick of the Day video. It is April 10th. Today we're going to take a look at one out of the consumer staple sector, Keurig Dr. Pepper. You're probably well aware they make the, you know, uh, coffee makers, the Keurig little packets that you put in to make your own individual cups of coffee. Dr. Pepper, several other brands we'll take a look at here as well. Again, you're probably well aware of this company. If you would, before we get into the video, take a moment to hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Hopefully you are on your own investing journey as well. Hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content and drop a comment down below. Do you drink once you see all the brands? Let me know if you drink any of the brands, uh, partake in any of the coffees that they have. And do you have a Keurig on your counter? I know my wife and I had one for a while. I'm not a big coffee drinker, but she is. She goes to Starbucks and drinks a lot of teas, uh, not a lot of coffee, but I do drink tea on occasion, just not enough to justify having a Keurig on the counter. Uh, and then we have two kids now, so we're a little limited on counter space now because some of their stuff takes up a little more room. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. We'll keep going with the video. This is the Vested Interest Stock Screener. This is how I set up the videos. It's also how I look at a company on a high level to see if I'm interested in investing. Just because it meets five of eight or six of nine if it's a financial company, I use price to book for financial companies like banks, does not necessarily mean I am investing. It just means it goes onto my potential watch list. And if it is one I am really interested, then I do more of a deep dive into the financials, find out a price I'm willing to pay, and then I wait for the stock price to align with that price. And then I pull the trigger and potentially add it. It's also how I look at companies that are already in my portfolio to back check and make sure they're still meeting some of my investment criteria. And if they are not, it might be worth taking a look at or possibly even trimming out of the position if things have changed with the company. So hopefully you have your own investing criteria. You can use this as a reference, some of the things I look at, uh, but make sure you're making your own to go and coincide, coincide with your investing strategy, your timeline to retirement, your age, what you are looking to accomplish as an investor. Don't blindly copy mine or anyone else's uh, for that matter, make sure they are tailored to you. But this one you can, like I said, use as a reference if you'd like. Now back to the video, we are talking about Keurig Dr. Pepper. You can check them out at www.keurigdrpepper.com. That's www.keurigdrpepper.com. Let me go through that one more time. www.keurig g d r p e p p e r.com that is their homepage where i pulled this information from keurig dr pepper canada and i did not know they were out of canada but apparently they are is the canadian division of keurig dr pepper a leading beverage company in north america with a portfolio of more than 125 owned licensed and partner brands and powerful distribution capabilities to provide a beverage for every need anytime anywhere so you're going to see here on the top all across are their beverages, right? Dr. Pepper, I mean, it's right in the name, Keurig, Dr. Pepper. 7-Up, Crush, Sun Drop, Core Hydration, that's a water. Yahoo, uh, Yoohoo, I used to love Yoohoo. When I was a kid, I used to drink these all the time. Uh, better than chocolate milk, in my opinion. Uh, we don't have to debate it. Some people like chocolate milk better. I think Yoohoo's better. Uh, RC Cola, A&W, Verner's, Big Red, by uh, Clamato, I'm not sure what that is. Squirt, Sunkiss, Canada Dry, Schweppes, Hawaiian Punch, right? There's your kids. Punch probably going in their lunch boxes. Real Lemon, Snapple, who doesn't know what Snapple? Stewart's, Nantucket Nectars, Mr. and Miss T. I've never seen this one. Mr. T and Miss T. I've never seen that one. IBC Root Beer, several Root Beer, Dr. Pepper, A&W, IBC. And then these here are some of their partners uh, that they provide. Uh, I'm assuming coffees, right? Mountain Green, Swiss, uh, Brista Prima, Tully's. Donut Shop, Krispy Kreme, McCafe, Cinnabon. So these are partnerships that they have. Uh, they had Starbucks in there. There were there were a bunch of other ones. Swiss Miss. I mean, I couldn't get them all. Swiss Miss is obviously a cocoa, uh, but they have a lot of different partnerships. And these are the little cups that you actually put into the uh, the coffee makers, or or in this case for Swiss Miss, uh, uh, hot cocoa makers, tea makers. Green Mountain, I believe, is a tea. Coffee Roast, it says, but I believe they also do teas. And then they do have a small hand in snacks mott's snacks i know my kids like their uh, little chewy fruit snacks uh, so they have their hands in snacks as well so beverage and snack provider is what their bread and butter is again i did not know they were out of canada so interesting www.keurigdrpepper.com is their homepage if you want to know more about them 
And the reason we were taking a look at them, down 1.16% on the day. And I will say they were suggested by a viewer of the channel. So a shout out to you. I will throw your name in the title uh, to give you credit for this. I really do appreciate the suggestion. Keurig, Dr. Pepper, ticker KDP is who we're talking about here. Out of the consumer staple sector, again, down 1.16% on the day. $30.65 is where they closed out the day. 52-week range, as low as $27.66, as high as $35.99. They are a little closer to their 52-week low than their 52-week high. Market cap of $41.457 billion, a beta of 0.66, so they are less volatile than the overall market, though today there was quite a bit of volatility. Big drop-off here at 10 o'clock. Looks like they tried to rebound. Big jump up here for a brief second. Uh, rebounded a little bit to the close of the day. Again, down 1.16% on the day. P.E. ratio price earnings, $19.77 per share. Now, this is lower than, let's say, a Pepsi, a Coca-Cola, which would be some of their competitors out there. EPS earnings per share, $1.55 per share. Earnings date coming up April 25th. For dividend is $0.86. Cents. They are quarterly payer with a 2.81% dividend yield. Nice starting dividend yield. X dividend date was March 27th. Looks like they are going to pay out on the 12th, so kudos to you out there who own Keurig, you will be getting a payout here in a couple of days. Uh, and the one-year target estimate, at least according to the Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, $34.94. So they do see some upside in the stock price, though not quite back to its 52-week high over the next calendar year, right? All the while, you could collect that 2.8% dividend yield. Now, we're going to take a look at dividend yield theory. To do that, if you were to go to Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, over here on the left-hand side of the chart, you'd see a bunch of different tabs you could click on. Financials, statistics, analysis. Uh, if you were to go into statistics, you go down to dividends and splits, you look at their five-year dividend yield average at 2.14%. You compare it to its current, 2.81, or over here where it says forward, 2.81, same number. And since it is higher than their five-year average, it speaks to some undervaluation. So at least according to dividend yield theory, this one is potentially undervalued. And not only is it undervalued, it has a nice margin of safety right now. Payout ratio is low at 53.55%. I like 75% or less, so this definitely meets that metric there, and they have a lot of room to increase this runway, a lot of free cash flow still available to pay down debt, make acquisitions, uh, invest back into the company, repurchase shares, and pay dividends, which is what we want them to be doing with free cash flow as dividend growth investors. All right, love you. Oh, sorry, that was my wife, my uh, daughter, and her going. Uh, I think one of my daughters has to go and do her uh, rehab for her knee. She hurt her knee before we went on vacation, so she's doing a little rehab. Apologies. Let's get back into the video here. Uh, we're going to take a look at free cash flow. And same thing, if you were to go to Yahoo Finance over here on the left-hand side, you'd see those same tabs, you know, free cash flow uh, is what we're going to be looking at, and you'd find that under the financials tab, right? So going back to 2020, you can see $1.9 billion in free cash flow, 2021, 2.4, 2022, 2.45, so a bit of a jump up there. 2023 is a, looks like a big drop in free cash flow, but let's take a look at this repurchase of shares. None in 2020, none in 2021, and even though they were you know, just a slight jump up in 2022, they did repurchase about 379 million shares. Bigger jump up in 2023, 706. Now, you'd have to do the math and see if that would account for that decrease in free cash flow. I don't think that it would quite account for all of it, but, uh, you know, I, it definitely would be, I say, account from 2020 to 2023. I'm going to call it uh, growing free cash flow with the repurchase of shares counted in that. Now, we're going to jump over to stockanalysis.com. That's another site that I like. You pick any sites that you want. Just make sure you're picking more than one and looking at multiple sites to make sure the information you're getting is accurate and up to date. That's the whole idea and the reason I suggest more than one. Uh, just don't blindly copy one. You might be getting information that's outdated or not correct, and then you're making decisions on, eight out, on uh, uh, outdated and incorrect information. So that's why I suggest more than one. They have 10 analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a consensus buy. They have a low estimate of $32, which it currently sits 4.4% lower than their lowest estimate. Average estimate of $36.70, which would be a 19.7% increase from where it currently sits. And if it happened to hit their high of $42, that would be a 37.03% increase. All the while, you could collect that 2.8% dividend yield, at least if you were to buy them now. 
Now we're going to go to the statistics here. We're going to look at return on equity and return on invested capital. I typically like 10% or better. Return on equity, this one, 8.60%, a little lower than I'd like it. Not egregiously so, but a little lower than I would like it. Return on uh, invested capital, same thing, 6.48%. I like 10% or better. So this is really the only sign that I see where I have some question. I would like higher return on equity and return on invested capital, if I'm being honest here. EPS, I like 5% or better. They're projected 10.25% over the next five years, so that's good. Uh, revenue forecast to grow 3.95%. Looks good as well. Good numbers overall. Um, you know, not a bad entry price if you were looking for something in this space to compete with like a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi. Uh, that would be their competitors out there. And their brands are, you know, sticky brands just like theirs are. You know, I think people who drink Dr. Pepper are going to keep drinking Dr. Pepper, 7-Up, uh, Sunkist, you know, uh, the Mott's Fruit Snacks. I know my kids like them. Uh, I don't think the Keurig coffee drinkers out there are going anywhere if anything uh, maybe a few more and we're going to jump in and look at the dividend history real quick again quarterly payer payout ratio i think uh, yahoo uh, yahoo finance headed at 53 percent they're saying 55 either way under the 75 percent that i like lots of room to increase that dividend looks like it's plenty safe enough nice dividend growth high single digit 7.3 percent only three years of dividend growth now that one so long as they continue this dividend growth and continue down the path they're going, no issues there. Everyone, Every company's got to start somewhere. Obviously, I like companies with a little more of a history there, but three years of dividend growth is not terrible. Buyback yield 1.41%, shareholder yield 4.23%. All good numbers overall. Like I said, if you could look for a little bit more of a pullback or even now, it doesn't look like it's a terrible uh, buy-in price if you're looking for something that kind of competes in the beverage space against Pepsi and uh, Coca-Cola, which always seem to be paying a premium for. And, and even the price to earnings is uh, quite a bit lower on this one at even 19%. And that's lower than the market. I think the market average right now is around 19 to 20%. So not a bad company. Again, I recognize the brands. I know Keurig. I know their, their soda brands that we were, were looking at. So uh, let's wrap this one up. 2021, September 30th, they were paying 18 cents in fractions of a penny. Looks like September 2022, they raised it up to 20 cents. September 2023 up to 21 cents in a fraction of a penny. So I would anticipate here in 2024 that if they are going to continue this three years and make it four years of growth, that would come in September. So look out for that for those of you who are shareholders. Well, I always appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the Vested Interest community. Hopefully you're on your own investing journey as well. And if you have not started your investing journey, drop a comment down below and let me know why you have not. What are you waiting for? I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. Uh, and thank you to the individual who did, uh, sorry, I'll put your name in the, I didn't pull it up before I did the video, but I know you did uh, make a recommendation. So I will put it in the uh, title. Uh, of the video or in the video thumbnail, uh, you should see that. So whenever the thumbnail comes up, you'll get credit for that there. And if you have a company like uh, Keurig, you'd like me to take a look at in a stock pick of the day video, go ahead and drop it down below. And just like this one, I'll work it in the rotation on a day it pulls back and we'll do a video on it. I don't cover tobacco stocks and I do not cover non-dividend stocks on this particular channel. Well, this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a best in interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in the presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm going share my opinion. Invest in your for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk and cannabis money. You never invest any amount of comfortability. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria or seek the advice counselor certified financial advisor.